Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to episode two of Design Basics. I am JP, and I'm here with you, our favorite Brizzy channel, and that is the Brizzy channel, of course. In today's Design Basics, we're going to look at panoramic lettering or text or headings, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that and just a cool idea of when you can use it and exactly what it is and what would be a good practice for when using it. Before that, it's the 31st of October. It's Halloween, even though the entire year feels like it's been Halloween. And I just cannot believe that there's only two months left in this year. So happy Halloween, everyone. And then, of course, a legend has passed away today with Sean Connery saying goodbye at the age of 90. And, you know, this generations of James Bond had been built upon this first actor for the James Bond role, even though I'm a Roger Moore generation guy. He was the one that my parents looked up to. And it's it's just, you know, one of those big moments in life that it shaped the world, it shaped the genre. And it's kind of, you know, sentimental saying goodbye to him today, even though he didn't know my name. Back to our panoramic lettering for today in Design Basic. So I was sitting the other day and I was thinking about this typical poster. And if you were like me, a student back in the 80s and early 90s, you probably had one of these in your bedroom or dorm room. You had one of these posters with whales jumping or killer fishes jumping, killer fish, killer whales. Sorry, it's not a fish, it's a mammal. And then it had this inspirational quote somewhere there on this poster as well. But how I got to this was the type of typography that is used in the letter spacing. If you look here at John Pine photography, what you see here at the bottom, this is just a mock-up I quickly made to, to show you this typical poster that we had back then. I guess we still have it today. I haven't been in a dorm for a very, very long time. And why do we use this kind of typography and what is the purpose for that? And what I want to show you is something actually borrowed from video and how we use this panoramic lettering in video to draw your eye from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. And that's especially when you are working with something that is very expansive, something that is like a landscape, and you want your viewer to take in all of the image. If I click here on John Pine Photography, let me just quickly get my select tool, and I reduce the letter spacing. Now the letter spacing, is the space between letters. Okay, and in graphic design, we talk about kerning and tracking, and we're not gonna go into that because we're working with Brizzy, but I just want to show you the effect of what happens when I remove all of that spacing. So let me just go up here, and I'm going to put it on zero, and then just center a line. Do you see the effect of that? It's just not the same. Having it much more extended and expanded, it has a huge impact on how you view the image. And this is the lesson learned here about, well, panoramic lettering or expanded lettering or applying more space between the letters. Your eye is drawn to what is written on the screen. Think of Netflix. You can watch a Netflix show, but the moment there are subtitles at the bottom, you read it, even if it's in your mother tongue. That is the power of text and letters. If I have this little bit of text here in the middle, it's going to draw my eye to this area, which is fine. But if I go ahead and I put it back on the expanded lettering we have, it takes your eye and it fills your eye all the way from the left to the right. And that is what we mean by panoramic lettering. It's very good for hero images. And when you're working with hero blocks and you have a travel block, even food, and you want the audience and your visitor to really take in the entire image when that image is very important. If you go to YouTube and you see these travel vlogs that people have on YouTube, you will often see the intros happen with these expanded lettering because it really makes you take in the entire scene. Let's go into Brizzy, Mr. Sean, goodbye. And here I have a page. Let's go and edit this page with Brizzy, and I'm going to show you how to apply it within Brizzy and talk about the letter spacing. So instead of having this banner here at the top, let's bring in a new one, a new block, create your own block, and then I'll drag that to the top. 
and select the settings, go to background, and I will get my image over here. While I'm working in WordPress at this moment, but you're going to do exactly the same in cloud, no difference there. Let's say this is coaching. So it's going to be a life coach and he's going to teach them mindfulness. And I forgot how to spell mindfulness with one L or two L's. Teacher always said full at the end of a word is just one L. Okay, so remember that. Your Frobota will be very proud. I bring in a text element, I drop it there, triple click to select everything. And very important next, I'm going to type in caps. So hit caps, caps lock on your keyboard and type in mindfulness. What is very important here is that the first thing you need to do is center align it, put it in the center. And next you have to apply contrast. Now contrast means that if your image is dark, your text needs to be light. So I'll just go for this swatch here on the far right, which is white. I believe it's white. If, 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 yes, that's white. And now we are off to a good start. Let's hop over to topography. And topography, big word for font. That's where we play around with the fonts. This kind of panoramic lettering works very good with these kind of fonts, which we call sans serif fonts. But it also plays well with serif fonts like Playfair Display. There's only a few here. They are good enough. But I think Montserrat is a perfect one. Later, we'll also do a very decent job for it. So let's stick to Montserrat. And then we need to increase the size. I am select that, type in something like 80. And it's already very nice and big. Let's apply some padding at the top. Click drag there in the blue bar and here at the bottom. And now let me just go and have a look at that image. The selector, you see the blue dot, drag it down. And this gives us the impact of that text. Looks good, but look what happens when we apply the space between the letters. Go to topography and this is where you find letter spacing. I'll increase it. And just look at that. I'm going to go wild on this one and it goes to 20. Let's see if we can type in there and make it 35. Yep, 20 is going to be the max for this one. Then let's go back to topography and let's increase the size. We really want this one to go all the way in that text element from the left to the right. And look at that. So what you do is you guide your visitors experience when they see this image they're going to read the entire one and instead of just seeing a small little bundle of text there in the middle with no joy they see this massive title and it takes them on this experience landscape experience from left to right and you bring in and connect the image to the text it's very very powerful and it works very well on these landscape journey kind of blogs and hero banners images that we use, especially at the top of our pages. So this is a great tip. Let's look at a few more things that you have to take into consideration when you work with this especially big letter spacing. We talked about Montserrat and the type of font that you select, but within the font, you're going to get different weights. So over here, currently it's on medium. This kind of expanded text works very well with thinner weights. If I go to thin, you will see it gives a little bit more of elegance, modernism, put it on extra light. But I think here normal actually does a pretty decent job. Let's put it on black so you can see why it doesn't work that well when it's that thick weight. Still not bad and I can see certain styles it will work. But for this delicate mindfulness that you're trying to portray here, journey, uh, something a little bit lighter, let's put it on light. I like that. Let's see if we play around with other fonts like Noto Serif. Mm, it loses a little bit of the power, but I tested it on play fair display. And here it gives that royal feeling, something very magnificent and something very grand that you want to portray. This is also very nice. But modern hip, you're going to do something like Leto or Montserrat, and it's going to work very nice on one of these thinner weights. Great. So now instead of using this, we can say about me, go away. And you have this nice hero image at the top. It's going to draw your viewer in. And if you want to, you can even apply an overlay here. Let's see if we apply this on. Oh, no. 
no, I don't like this color. I think this one, but I lose a lot of the image. The image is not that strong in this case. So let's work on a trick here, which is shadow. Click on the text again, go to colors, and then you see shadow over here. Let's just scroll up a little bit. Click on shadow and you won't see anything happen. You have to select the color before the shadow is applied. I will take a color from the image. And this is another graphic design tip I want to give you. Be careful to use something just like black. Black is sometimes too strong for it. What you want to do is you see this dark area here in the image and dark areas over here. You want to capture one of those colors and bring them in and use for your background. For that, you're going to need a color picker. Or you can do that any way you want. I have one extension here called Color Pick Eyedropper. And if I click on it, I just hover over it and you can see the color. There is a display of the swatch. And I'm going to try and find the darkest one with a little bit of brown in it. Click on it and I get my hex code over here. Control C, Command C to copy, close out. And then I go back here, color, shadow, and I'm pasting it there and you will see it applies it immediately. Now we're going to look at these three little peaks here at the bottom. The first one is dispersion, how it is scattered. The second one is going to be your shadow position on a vertical line. Currently you see it's at the bottom. So it's five, which means a positive number moves it to the bottom. And if I increase it, it will move further to the bottom. Yep. And if I move it to a negative, it's going to move up, which for me is kind of upside down. That's how it's going to work. And then this one, and you see the arrows, these indicate which one is which one. This one is going to move it to the left or the right. So positive number moves it to the right. So if I increase this, you see it moves further to the right. And if I move it down, it moves to the left. What you want to do for this kind of effect where you just want the text to stand out a little bit from the back is you want to have none of these. So I'm going to type in here zero, shift tab zero. And then for this one, I'm going to add a crazy number like 25 and look what happens. Did you see anything happen there? Barely, right? But look what happens when I reduce, ooh, let me just tab. I, let's try 15. Okay, so if I reduce it, and I play here with my opacity slider. If I put it at full opacity, you see the darkness there. Let's zoom in a little bit to that so you can see it better. Go here and I go to shadow. Ugh, let me go out a little, okay. And I'll take my opacity slider, move it down. Look at the S, you will see there is no shadow and now I increase it again and there's just that little bit of separation. It doesn't upset the picture. It's not, you know, disturbing. It works perfectly and you get that little bit of background separation. Even with that subtleness, I'm going to reduce it still. Less, yeah, is more. I have put it there at 50%. Perfect banner. We work with panoramic lettering, something you can remember for your next hero image. Remember that letter spacing put it on a nice font, make it big, and space it all the way out. Oh, before we forget, let's see how it's going to look on tablet. Have to reduce it here on tablet, definitely. And scroll down. Is it going to look good on the tablet? Yep, it looks good, but I think we still need to drag this down a little bit more to have more contrast. Yay, that looks perfect. And then we go to mobile. Mobile is going to be a challenge, but things like this, even breaking up the word like this, may just work on mobile. Yep, I know, let's try that. So we've got our text here, but we're going to go for the same thing. We're just going to reduce it to one line. And I think our problem is here, we definitely will need a thicker, a, a better weight for this. So I'll click there and we change the weight because it's responsive. Great, groovy, that looks pretty nice. 
if I have to say so myself. Nice. So we got the responsiveness all sorted out. You're good to go. It's going to work great for travel blocks and it will work very good for hero images and it makes a very bold statement. Don't overdo it though, you know, everything is good in little amounts. That's the design basics. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. More tips like this coming in the future. Enjoy this Halloween day, October the 31st. See you again in November. This is JB. Stay safe.